Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Beauty Pop Podcast. I'm Victoria. And I'm Jen. And today we're going to actually follow up on an episode we did two weeks ago. If you want to go back, if you haven't listened to it, that is our favorite celebrity-owned wines. Mm -hmm. And there were a few that, that we hadn't tried yet from the list. And so Jen, being our in-house sommelier. Uh, she's going to follow up on some reviews with that. And then I've got two new shows that I cannot wait to talk to you about because one is inspired by something that you did very recently. Me? You did not enjoy Jury Duty. Oh, <laughs> are you watching Jury Duty? We watched all of Jury Duty. I yep. can't wait to hear about it. <laughs> yes. So let's kick it off with some wine talk. Yeah. What, um, so we left off with you had ordered the Snooki. From Jersey Shore wine, right? I have because, as you know, and it hadn't if come you're, in, I think, right when we were right. recording the first episode. If you were, um, if you listened to the Beauty Pop podcast for a while, you know that Victoria and I um, are, are heavy watchers of the Jersey Shore and guilty pleasure all the it, way. Absolutely. And I was watching the Jersey Shore, the family reunion special, or not even a special anymore. It's a regular series. And I saw Snooki, and she's been talking about her wine for a long time, following her on Instagram. I'm like, this girl likes to drink. So her wine's <laughs> got to be good because you see her drinking her own wine all the time. A lot of times I think celebrities like buy their labels just to have something to sell and probably mm -hmm. don't actually consume it themselves. But yeah, you see Snooki all the time drinking her own messy mama wine. So I thought I'm going to try it. And they did switch. Um, they did switch winemakers. They were doing uh, Summerland Winery, which is up in Santa Barbara County. I'm super familiar with it. I've been there. I was a big fan. I was really hoping to uh, to try that version of Messy Mama, but she has switched providers to Knocking Point, which you told me is also run by an actor, and it's out of Washington State. Yeah, Stephen Amell from uh, Arrow. Yeah, yeah, he's the Green Arrow. Yep. And so I was excited, and the box came, and I told you I had them, and you're like, drink them so that we can talk about it. So <laughs> you did a red and a white? Is that what you I ordered? did? Yes. Yeah. So the way okay. that it works, she's got a rosé, and she has a red blend right now. And I don't know if they're going to switch things up, but I think that's what, she, that's what she can, you can get on her website right now. You have to buy a two-bottle minimum. So you either have to buy two rosés, two of the red blend, or one of each. So I got the combo pack. And both – tell you the, the greatest thing is they're both screw caps. So – I love the romance of popping a cork, but when you just want to get into your wine, and this is very snooky, because you can imagine she probably doesn't want to mess with the cork. <laughs> That's true. Um, I feel like, especially after a few bottles have been um, had, that it's probably even harder for her to mess with the cork. So it's a screw cap. <laughs> Easy to get in and out. These are not wines that you're going to set down in your cellar for months and months or years and years. You're going to drink these wines. Oh, the you know what? Let me ask you a quick question, because yeah. I know you you are the wine professional and <laughs> the expert. People still seem very divided on cork versus screw cap. And I've I've heard from people that, you know, like several wine stewards at restaurants that we've gone mm -hmm. to and we've asked for a recommendation or whatever. And I've heard a lot of people who are in the know say that it really has kind of leveled like it's it's a level playing field almost at this point. You're not, you can get good wine that's mm -hmm. a screw cap. It's no longer a judgment that, like, oh, that's just really cheap crap that you're drinking. Is right. that where you land? It's totally on that true. Tissue? By the way, you can get good wine in a box. I'm going to even tell you that. <laughs> because here's the reason that corks are problematic, and a lot of a lot of wineries that are a little bit lower end moved away from natural cork and they've moved to like that plastic cork, you mm -hmm. might have noticed. Yeah, that like rubbery thing. Yeah. Is that natural cork is is a real living, breathing thing, right? And it comes from a tree. And that for that reason, about one in every twelve bottles of wine will have will be corked. And that means that the cork doesn't perfectly fit, means there's a little bit of bacteria that slips in and it can change the flavor of the wine. Now Ooh. most people who are who are I didn't think about bacteria. That's interesting. Yeah, there's a little bit of bacteria that can get on the cork that can be part of the process or the cork can just not fit. It's got natural holes and textures and sometimes air can get into the bottle. And so winemakers, if you have a very if you've got a a pretty good palate, you're going to notice that one out of 12 bottles are going to be 
they call it corked. It's going to have an alarming wrong. rate. It's a one lot. out of 12. And a lot I of never would have guessed that a lot of high end wineries will actually give you your money back and replace the bottle or, or at least replace the bottle. If you do have a corked bottle of wine, because it happens so often, but how do you know if it's corked? If you're a regular person, most people don't know it's corked and most people will just drink the wine because they haven't like really been able to identify it. But I'm pretty good at identifying cork bottles. I've actually been wine tasting and I've been like, yeah, this is corked. And they'll be like, oh my (laughs) God, I'm so sorry. You're right. (laughs) Um, The best way that I can describe it to you is the smell of gym socks in your glass. And sometimes it is overwhelming (laughs) and sometimes it is just a little. Um, Because depending on how how much oxygen has made it into the bottle, how long, um, how long it's been happening, it may just be a small little funk. But in some cases, it may just be overwhelming. And you're like, ugh. And um, that's so equal for red and white? It's equal for red and white. And it won't make you sick. It's not like you're going to get sick drinking the wine. It's just not going to taste as good. Yeah. And why waste the calories? Why waste it if it's not the way it's supposed to be? So typically, I'll swirl before I take a, before I take a sip. I always swirl my glass. And that's to let air into the wine so that you can actually... Um, allow it to get some air, some aroma that it brings the aromas out. And then I take a deep smell into a sniff of the glass and it, you can smell right away if it's got kind of that funky, musty, not soil, because some wines are going to be earthy and have that earthy musky funk. But if it smells like socks, like worn <laughs> gym socks, like sweat. That's awful. Yeah. Um, even just a little bit, typically that means it's corked. That's the best. That's the best way to describe the smell that will come with a corked wine. Is there any way to tell by looking at the actual cork? No. Well, actually, yes. So in some cases there's a lot of things that'll cause the wine to turn. So if it, if there's oxygen that's gotten in, if there's a little bit of bacteria on the cork, you're not going to see anything. But Mm -hmm. sometimes if you leave your wine in the car, if it gets overheated, or if there is a little bit of a, of a spot in the cork where the wine can get out, if the cork is saturated with wine, you definitely want to smell it. And that is not always not the case that it's corked, but it's a, it's a good indicator that you might have a corked, wine in your glass. So, so if, if so wine if, on the cork, all the way so up the cork. All the way up. Okay. Because it's normal to have the bottom eighth Absolutely. of an inch or whatever, right? Because remember, when you're storing wine, most of the time you want to store it on, well, actually all the time, you want to store it on its side. You don't want it to be sitting straight up or or down. You want it to be sitting on its side. So because it's that nat- dries the cork out, right? Yeah, natural to have yeah. the wine on the bottom end of the cork. But if it starts to suck up into the cork, You'll go, hmm, it's probably not the greatest sign. That doesn't always, it's not always the case that it's corked, but it's a good indicator that it could be. All right, great. I've always wondered so, that. So I'm so happy screw that cap we is got good. to that. So back to the screw cap. And a lot of wineries are switching to that, um, even higher end wineries, because it is just easier to keep the wine. Now, if you want to age wine, the reason you don't see a lot of high end wineries using cork, or excuse me, using screw caps is because it's not. It, screw caps are not really good for aging wine. You need to have a bottle with a cork in it to really age the wine. So mm-hmm. wines that are meant to be to be drunk and you're supposed to drink them now, um, they'll have the screw caps on them. And that's why a lot of white wines are, are coming out with it. It's easier, it's cheaper, um, less risk. And especially for the, the drinkable stuff that you, you're kind of everyday wines, it's a perfect yeah. solution. Yeah, so stuff that's gonna be a collector's item that goes into yeah, your wine you still cellar. Cork. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I'm Erica, one third of the podcast, Books and Betches, a comedy book podcast where we swear, spoil, and we talk about... Whoa, 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 whoa. You cannot say that in this. What do you mean? That's like our slogan. It's our gimmick. It is, but just say we're a very funny adult book podcast. How about we just give some examples of things we talk about? Well, there's a lot of chaos. I'm Chris in it with me, I have... We talk about books, but we're not your AP Lit class. I definitely hit on the major points. You absolutely did not. She did. You talked about... in the order you thought she was. You talked so slowly (laughs) about one thing. A lot of sidebar conversations. I just... Are you denying the existence of Chubacabras? You know what, Erica? Yes, I am. (laughs) And we don't always get the facts right. (laughs) Epilogues don't belong in books. Call it chapter one. That's a prologue. The second I see... That's a prologue. Oh, I'm talking about prologues. (laughs) You can listen to new episodes of the Books and Betches podcast every Tuesday morning, anywhere you get your podcasts. Bye-bye. Okay. 
Okay, so back to Snooky. Yeah. So uh, it's unfortunate that because you have tasted the Summerland wine, so I'm I assuming. Had, yeah. Right. So I tasted so I'm Summerland, but not her brand was, of Summerland. It was but good. wouldn't it? Isn't it kind of all the same thing, and they just put a different label on it? Not always, because it can be different, but different year to year. Grapes are going to taste different. Um, the mm-hmm. wine making process is going to be different. The blending process is different. Um, if she, I don't know how much control she had over that. She could help be, you know, she could help blending blend it, which would have her personal style on it. But Summerlin mm. wines, by and large, are pretty darn good. So yeah. she's got her wines being made now by Knocking Point. And I was, I like Washington wines. I typically like a Washington State Pinot, but I was interested uh, with the red blend and the rosé. And I'll say overall, it, it both wines were not bad. I started with the rosé. Um, it's a really pretty color. It's got a great nose on it. As far as the finish, it's super dry. So if you like a really dry, crisp rosé, this would be great for summer. Um, very clean, very dry. I served it right out of the refrigerator, so it was really cold, very refreshing, um, which is good because sometimes rosés can be too sweet. The only oh, thing I think yeah. I was missing is that it almost didn't have enough flavor on the finish for me, it kind of fell a little flat on the finish. So if I were putting this up against, you know, really good rosés, I'd say it fell flat. Mm -hmm. But for a rosé that you would buy like at the grocery store level, it really wasn't bad. It was, there was nothing offensive about it. It wasn't like you taste it, this is sugar water. Mm -hmm. It tasted like a very crisp, refreshing. It was easy to pound, which could be your trouble because it's almost like it goes down like water almost. And so- that could get you into which it, is it's probably trouble. something that Snooky enjoys. That's why she likes it. <laughs> so I know you you bought the two pack. But yeah. Is is there a price point on that rosé? So they, it was both. I think it was forty bucks. So they were about twenty bucks a bottle. Okay. Okay. I don't think they divided them evenly. Every two bottles, I think it was twenty. It was forty bucks for each two pack. Um. So it's and not is a her bad rosé. Is is that rosé? I guess both of them are. Washington wines. Yes. Washington and one state of the, wines. I would imagine. Now, here's what I was missing. I've never had a rosé from Washington state. Neither have I, which made me, it, that's what made me worry. Yeah. That's what I'm kind of asking. Like, hmm. Also, I do love, I do like Pinot Noir from Washington state. Oh, the Pinot's killer. It's really nice and light. And it's mm-hmm. a, it's a, it's a, you know, sometimes it's too light for red drinkers, but yeah. I do like it every once in a while. It's a nice, they do. I mean, especially Pinots that are just easy drinking. You don't even need mm-hmm. food. They're great from Washington state. A to Z, state. that brand jumps to mind. That's yeah. everywhere. A to Z for Yeah. Although Um, that's from Oregon, but still same region. One of the things that I was like, as I said, the label's really cute. It's got like the cute little leopard print, everything. I did notice (laughs) though, that they don't tell you where the wine is from exactly. And that to me means it could be from anywhere. So as much as this, this company is from Washington state, there's nothing explicit on the bottle, which is unusual because there are legal, um, things that you have to follow. So if the wine was coming from, let's say, Walla Walla, Washington, it would have to say Walla Walla. So this tells me that this is probably a bit of the grapes from wherever this knocking point grows grapes. It's probably a big mishmash or of grapes. Because I have been following Stephen Amell for years and yeah. he and his friend Drew started this and it, it the first thing they put out was a rosé mm-hmm. called like Two Dudes Rosé or something. I do not think that they're growing anything on their own. I think they're purchasing. They could be buying the juice. Yeah. Surplus or whatever. And that would make sense because there's no winemaking region on there. Because if there was a vineyard, Mm -hmm. Stephen Amell is all over Instagram at like there you'd be, you'd be, he'd be like taking you on the tour of the vineyard. So that's smart. So that's good to know. See, that's what I figured was happening. That's my guess. They were getting, they're either getting their juice or their grapes from somewhere, but it's not. Yeah. We don't know where. And so that means that it, that's there's nothing wrong with that. You'll see a lot of wines in the grocery store or wherever that'll say California. That just means it's from anywhere in the state of California. It could come from Bakersfield or it could come from Napa or maybe a little bit of both. And they just don't want you to know that. So that was one thing. The other thing that I thought was odd switching to the red now is that they didn't and have- And that's a blend, right? It's a it's blend. A per- yeah. And typically on a blend, you want to see what you're drinking. You know, it'll right. a lot of times we'll say- um, either, you know, 50% cab, 25% Merlot, uh, whatever, 10% Malbec. It'll kind of give you the the breakdown of what you're drinking. There was no breakdown on the label. So I don't know exactly what was in it. I'd imagine there was probably, it tasted to me, it wasn't overly jammy. So I have a feeling there was probably a lot of Merlot in there. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. It's hard, to, it's hard to know what was in that bottle. I was trying to figure it out. Uh, but it was good. I actually think the red is better than the rosé mm-hmm. um, as far as just a little more 
flavorful, got a little more character. Um, the rosé was great and drinkable. I think you'd like it because you like a dry rosé. Yeah. And like I said, it's not nothing offensive about it. But the red actually had some character and was pretty good. I It's very drinkable without it. I don't, it's not a food wine at all. It's definitely. Oh, it's not. Okay. I was going to ask is because, you know, Snooki and her char- charcuterie boards, you could definitely, you know, she's always all about that. <laughs> yeah. And you could definitely enjoy it with charcuterie. So it would match when I say it's not a food wine. It's not like I, I think, gosh, I need a steak or yeah. gosh, I need barbecue or something intense with this, like a lot of Syrahs or some of the deep deeper wines, you feel like you need something, something. Hardy. Yeah. Hardy. Something with some fat in it. to. But no, this was a very, I'd say medium bodied red and it was good. I don't know that I need to, I, I would reorder again just to see what else she's doing. Um, I don't think that I need to go, oh my God, I need a case, but I would yeah. try it again <laughs> for sure. So yeah. of the celebrity wines that I've had, this one was pretty decent, especially when you consider someone from the Jersey Shore is making it. I don't know <laughs> how serious their <laughs> reputation is. So, right, right. you know, all in all, I, not a bad effort. I just, you know, uh, it, it, for a very simple, if you're, it, if you just want to drink some wine, this is it. Just, it's very drinkable. Nobody's going to get upset about it. Mm-hmm. There's not... You know, it's kind of like it's like if you have a bunch of people over to your apartment, to your house, whatever, and you just want to serve a decent red wine, it sounds like this would fit the bill. Vanilla ice cream is always good. Is it the most exciting ice cream? No, but it's always pretty decent. So that's that's kind of how I would I would rate the Snooky wines. Are how do you feel about? um, I feel like I'm interviewing you now. I know. How do you feel, Jen, about (laughs) red blends in general? The reason I ask is because (laughs) uh, the reason I ask is because when I lived in Manhattan um, for a long time, we had this amazing wine guy who was very knowledgeable at, you know, everyone in New York City, you have your local little wine shop. Yeah. And they know you and they know what you like. And so we had this amazing guy who was just a savant. Like mm-hmm. you could go in. He was he was this surfer from Long Island. And so we called him Surfer Joe. And I'd go in. I'd be like, Joe. And he's like, what's on the menu tonight? Because I was always preparing. <laughs> you tell him. Yeah. And so I'd be like, oh, tonight's tacos. And he'd be like, got it. I go, oh, I have a wrinkle for you. There's no beef. It's like soy crumbles, you know, right. like ve- like veggie style tacos. He goes, I have the perfect wine. And it was this red blend that was from California that literally knocked my socks off. Mm-hmm. And it was so perfect with every bite of the taco. Yeah. And I never would have even thought to pair red wine with tacos. Because I use all the traditional old El Paso, you know, taco seasoning. Yeah, of course, all the good stuff. All that stuff. So it just isn't real beef. It's mm-hmm. just, you know, sort of beefy flavored soy. So I, I was so impressed by that. But he had told me that when I went back the next time, I was like, that red blend was insane. I think it was probably maybe like 20 bucks, somewhere in the yeah. low 20s. And he had said that, a, and this was this is going back now, you know, probably maybe six six years ago since we've been at the Jersey shore now for five. So yeah, like six years ago. And he said that a lot of vineyards that they were getting, or a a lot of distributors, I guess would probably be Mm -hmm. the better word that they were getting shipments from, from California were, they were doing a thing where they were basically, and it might be what knocking point is doing. They were essentially these companies were being started by buying surplus, Mm -hmm. making their own blend of, and he said, there were times where, you know, he goes, there are certain blends that you're taking what would end up being a hundred dollar bottle of wine. Oh yeah. They're buying this surplus that for whatever reason, doesn't make it into, you know, that, what would be the term that press into the, yeah. Into that vintage. Yeah. Into that year's production. Yeah. So, and then they would just sell off. Of course their name would never appear. Mm -hmm. You know, it would, it would be a totally, it's like a secondary business. Yep. And he said that there are companies that were started that just shopped around for these, for these amazing grapes and this product, this, this surplus. And then they would just from there create their own blend. There's a big business for growers in that department. You know, we constantly think about. And you never sacrifice your reputation. So you could be a really high end vineyard and no one ever has to know you know, that maybe it ends up in Snooky's wine. Well, no one has to know. A good place to look for those are um, Trader Joe's and Costco. And 
so a lot of people think when we think about grapes, we think that every grower is attached to a winery. Some wineries have their own vineyards and they become their own growers. They take everything from the vine to the glass, essentially. But there are a whole lot of growers who just make their money growing grapes. Typically, and I think I may have told you this tip before, the vintage, V-I-N-T-J at Trader Joe's, if you want to spend seven or eight bucks on a bottle of wine, and have it be pretty good, get vintage, V-I-N-T-J. It is offshoot wine, extra wine from some really good mid to high-end wineries. Um, And it's not always a blend. I can't believe it's that cheap. You can get a Pinot, you can get the vintage Pinot Noir, you can get the vintage Zinfandel, you can get the vintage Cab. And a lot of that wine comes from the excess that comes from pretty decent wineries. And it's cheap. It's not two buck chuck, but it's it's going to be, I mean, the last time I bought it was several years ago. So let's just say inflation, but let's say 10 bucks a bottle. I can't sure, imagine yeah. it would be any more than that. Yeah. And it's you're going to get a really good, solid, drinkable bottle of wine. So for a party, if you want to buy a lot of bottles, it's a great, great place to start. Um, Costco, I think, does it too. You know the stories about the vodka, the Kirkland vodka. Yes. I don't even know, you know. I don't even know if that's like urban legend at this point. Or I don't think so. I think it's. I think it's some the people real swear deal. it's like Belvedere or Grey Goose or something. I think I've it's heard Grey Goose. Right? Goose and yeah, I, Goose yeah. I've heard. So, and I'm a fan of Grey Goose. Typically, um, I will order a Grey Goose martini, mm-hmm. and I Kirkland in a pinch is not bad. So, I've heard that from so many people, and no yeah. one. Will substantiate the rumors, and <laughs> I am picky. Them. I'm pretty picky about my vodka. Not that I'm picky yeah, me about. Too. I mean, because I I know you're not a Tito's girl. I actually like Tito's, but like as soon as you get into a low end vodka, I can taste it, and I'm like, oh, because I think my body goes, okay, you're not in your 20s, girl. You need to like upgrade here. So, yeah. it, but Kirkland, doesn't I can do, do it. Tito's. Like, I'm not like offended by Tito's. It, like the one thing that I that. And I don't know what it is, but Tito's and soda is fine. Yeah. But it's the one vodka that I cannot stand it if it has any fruit in it. If it has oh. a lemon or a lime in it, it, there's something about it that changes the entire mm. flavor profile for me. And I'm just like, oh, it is I sugar can't. cane. Maybe that's why. Maybe it makes it too something or other. It makes it it's kind of funky. I don't yeah. know. And I know huh. everyone drinks. My friend Lizzie drinks Tito's with like 17 limes. So like clearly it doesn't <laughs> bother everyone. Yeah. <laughs> but it for me, it, I just, oh, if I have to get Tito's, like if that's the only thing that I can, you know, that's the only thing available at someone's house or whatever, then I just drink it just with club soda and I don't add any fruit to it. Right. But yeah, but there there is just a weird flavor thing for me that's odd. But um. I am like you though. I am picky and I'm a martini drinker. So if I if I can't have Belvedere is my first choice. Mm-hmm. If I can't find Belvedere, then I usually go to Kettle. Yeah. I'm not a huge Grey Goose fan. Mm-hmm. In a pinch, I can do a Goose Martini, but for me, Goose is almost so flavorless that huh. if you mix it with club soda, it's just like drinking water. Like I can, Belvedere is the same thing. It's so smooth that if I do Belvedere in club, I I don't even taste any vodka. Interesting. Hmm. I don't know. My dad is a my dad is a martini drinker as well, and he is a he loves Chopin because it's a, a potato vodka. Oh, that's vodka. a good one. Yep, and it is really good if you can find yeah. Chopin or Blue Ice. Both of those are really good. Haven't um, had Blue Ice. Blue Ice but is Chopin delicious. is really good, but they're harder to find. And so he'll always do Kettle, and I'll do Grey Goose, and then we go, let's try it. And really, there's not a huge difference. Yeah. But he thinks Kettle has a, a little bit more sharp. of like a. Sharp is the word. I was going to say kettle has a tiny bite to it. Yeah, which is why I like it mixed with club soda because it's it's a flavor. You know, right, there's like you an can actual actually taste it. Yeah. yeah, you can taste it in a martini. It's okay. Like it's not the best. I don't think it's the best, but in a pinch, it's you know, it's, it's all good. Now I it's did also fine. real quick follow up. I tried the Aveline, which is Cameron Diaz's. Oh, we talked right, about right, it right. on the episode. Yeah, and I saw it when I was out, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to pick it up because I think that was the top rated. Um, wine, celebrity wine from our list. And so I yeah. had to try it. It was about 20 bucks. I tried the rosé. Um, not bad. Not bad. Again, Better than Snookies. No. Well, yes. Actually, I would say yes. Probably a smidge better just because it had a little more structure to it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm interested. I see she just launched a Sauvignon Blanc and I'm interested in trying that. Um, I did like that they had the calorie count on the label because it is so hard to nail down exactly how many calories are in your glass yeah. of wine. Most of them don't have a calorie count. This one did. And so I'll give her props for that. Per, it was, yeah, it was good. It say? 
uh, 102 or 120 or something like that. So, but for a five ounce pour. Okay. See, that's where they lose me. Who drinks five ounces? I know. Well, I mean, that's a decent glass of wine, but are you going to have a second one? Are you going to fill it up to the top? Come on. I don't know. I just like, yeah, I don't know. I did Weight Watchers years ago and, yeah. you know, it was like the five ounce pour or maybe even a four ounce. And I was like, it was four ounces. That was, I was the like, Weight come Watchers on, Weight me. Watchers. No one's doing that. I know. No one pours four ounces or five ounces of wine. No one does that. In and a Victoria's restaurant. got in her face. <laughs> Yeah. Like the, you know, if you go to a restaurant, you're getting yeah. a minimum. Usually the standard is six ounces. Right. In, you know, in a, in a, of wine in a restaurant. Sometimes you'll get more, you know, if it's a bigger glass or whatever, but no one pours five. I know. So take the calorie count and then, you know, Double add it. a little on. Yeah. <laughs> Have 10 <laughs> ounces. Was, so, so oh. what, so you had the rosé mm -hmm. from Aveline. Isn't there is it their Chardonnay is the one that everybody talks about? I don't know. Or I can't remember Pinot what was on the list. I just know I saw Aveline. They had the rosé yeah. and I'm like, okay, I'll try it. And it, it was fine. It was good. It was yeah. Good. The white wine, there is a bottle of white. I don't know if it's a if it's Pinot Grigio or Chardonnay, but that's mm -hmm. the one that I think they launched with. They, meaning Cameron Diaz, and there's another female that yeah, she's her partnered friend. with. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that, but, you know, props to, props to Cam. She I know. seems to be, you know, everyone and she's seems got a to collaboration like it. with Goop, by the way. Um, Goop Kitchen. I just, I just saw Did it today you see on her Instagram. Salad? <laughs> yeah, she's got a Cameron Diaz salad and they're launching the Sauvignon Blanc. And so she's offering that as kind of like the pair for the summer. So the Sauvignon Blanc and the Crunch Maybe you should salad. try it. I think I might have to. There might like be a, a Friday night salad. in my future. I do too. I don't I like know what a, the Crunch is in it though. I don't Something know. healthy. She's always well, very healthy. She didn't have the recipe available to look on Instagram. You actually had to go, I think, to her website or something. Which I was oh, okay. Do. But I'll look yeah. up at, on Goop when next time when I try to spend a hundred bucks on salad, I'll <laughs> let you know how it is. <laughs> but at least, okay. So at least you've had some of the the Aveline, so we know it's it's decent. It, yeah. We still have to get you some post. I gotta Malone. get some post. I've been looking. Some Maison and I number have not nine. Been able to find it yet? So I'm on it. I'm on it. I'm yeah. keeping my eyes open. I can't open. believe it's not in California. He lives. It's in It's got to be. But I've only been to one store for it. I mean, literally in the last couple of weeks, it's been oh, rough. Okay. So I've only looked one place. I will continue to look though. It'll be my my mission. That's right. You had jury duty. I had jury duty. My dad was sick. It was like, it was just a- It's been a lot. But I'm curious because, quick story. So after jury duty, after I completed, I only went through jury selection, which took a bazillion days, like three days. I thought to myself, and I shouldn't even say it here, but I'm like, you know what? I want to come up with an idea for a TV show about jury duty because you're putting all of these people together from all different walks of life. You could this could be like the new Grey's Anatomy. You could have people who are like in love with each other. You get people that hate each other. You get you know there could be some room for fun. And then I hear that there is a jury duty show and I've been dying to see it and you watched it. So I need yeah, the Yeah, we just full finished review. it. It is it's brilliant. It's totally unique. Mm -hmm. Um if you've seen it popping up on Amazon Prime, like if you're on your, you know, Amazon homepage or whatever. Um, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's actually on Amazon Prime. If you have Prime, it's free. It is a brilliant concept. And I can't believe that someone hasn't done it before now for all the reasons you just said. Yeah. This is the craziest cast of characters. Whenever you're sitting, it's like going to the DMV and you look right. around and it's like, but then you're stuck with these people, you know, if you get put on a case. So the premise is everything... Uh, in the show is completely planned. Mm -hmm. um, most of it is scripted because they had to leave some room for improv and stuff. Most of it is scripted. It's filmed in um, some courthouse that maybe I, I, I'm assuming it's a real courthouse. It certainly looked like it was. And so the premise is everyone in the show is an actor except for one person. <laughs> and he doesn't know. He's he is a, he's this really nice, goofy kind of guy. Mm -hmm. His name's Ronald. And he's from some other state that they don't say where he's from. He believes that he is there to do jury duty for a real trial and that there's a documentary film crew that will be interviewing him throughout the process. Oh, and so God. he's completely on board. Yeah. And he shows up. And so they have him in the waiting room, you know, like where everybody is kind of hanging out. And so sort of like um, The Office or like that show Community, you mm -hmm. know, where they have like those direct so It's like a camera. documentary style. Yeah. yeah. The mockumentary kind of thing. Right. So you'll get to know all of the other jurors and the characters and stuff. And James Marsden, 
who's an actor. If mm-hmm. you if you don't know the name, trust me, you know the face. He's super super cute. He's been he's in one of I think he's one of the Avengers. Yeah. He's been in um, the new Sonic movie. Like he's been in a ton of stuff for years. So he's playing himself, mm-hmm. but he's playing a very heightened Hollywood version of himself. Okay. So he shows up for jury duty and this guy, Ronald, the, 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 the dupe, I guess they will call him. He starts to kind of like recognize him and he's trying to place him. He knows mm-hmm. he's seen the face or whatever. So Marsden plays it up and, you know, sits next to him and then they start talking and, you know, Marsden's like, well, you know, he's like, I, I got a big meeting with the director. I can't say his name, but you know, <laughs> I can't, I can't do jury duty. You know, like I gotta, you know, I, I'll get excused or whatever. And he, he pulls all kinds of antics to like get excused from the case. Um, the judge, the guy who's the judge is so fantastic that I actually thought he was a real judge. No, it turns out it turns out he was an attorney. It was a, a trial attorney for mm-hmm. 30 years or something. And he's literally this. So the, after you watch the whole season and then everything is revealed, all the actors then start talking about like the experience and everything. They have a little behind the scenes episode. That's really fun to watch. And you see how they've put it all together. The guy who's the judge is just phenomenal. And um, he's like every cranky judge that I ever had to appear before. He goes, I channeled all of them. <laughs> and he is, I'm telling you, cause you just went through this. You're going to see this guy and be like, that's the most believable judge ever. And, is it funny? Will I like it? Oh, it's funny. It's outrageous. Some of the stuff that they do th- that, I mean, it's, 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 yeah. And then the jury gets sequestered. Oh, Basically God. Marsden calls some paparazzi cause he's trying to get a, make a distraction cause he wants mm-hmm. to get off, off of jury duty. And so then the judge decides to sequester the entire jury and they're at like two different hotels. And so it follows to where, you know, what they're doing at the hotel. And like, it's just this whole seven episode journey that is insane. And like, like what you mentioned, there's a romance there's, I mean, it's, it's everything that you're, you know, that you're saying, like, it is just wild. And at the (laughs) very end, they reveal to Ronald that he's the only one who wasn't in on it, but he takes the case really seriously. And the case itself is also funny. Like there are so many layers to it. Lewis and I just, we just zipped right through it. We thought it was so entertaining and just so original and creative. I it's, might have to start that tonight because like I'm kind of out of stuff. I tried stars on Mars. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> Wait, what? I've never <laughs> even William heard of that. Shatner, it's a William Shatner reality <laughs> show with stars on Mars. They <laughs> simulate being on Mars. Oh, I heard about that. Is that yeah. Did they film that down in Australia? I have no idea where they are. I only could last an episode. It was really, 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 really bad. Shatner oh. was the best part. But yeah, so I'm definitely on the on the lookout for something new because that wasn't going to be it, clearly. <laughs> well, I would definitely recommend Jury Duty because I okay. think you'll really enjoy that. I think it's appropriate for the last couple of weeks. Of so course. I think I might have to start that tonight. Of course. Um, and then the other show that we're watching, we haven't finished it yet, but we're 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 in the process. The new Kaylee Cuoco show on Peacock. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's called Based on a True Story. Right. And it is it's nuts. It's it's totally wild. It's this married couple who are going mm-hmm. through a lot of financial problems. She's about to give birth to their first baby and she's married to a guy who uh is an an ex pro tennis player. Basically now, you know, he got injured and he's working at a tennis club and not making a lot of money and you know the whole thing. They there's this West Side, they call him the West Side Ripper. It's all mm-hmm. out in in West Hollywood. And the West Side Ripper um, is this serial killer and they figure out who the serial killer is. I'm not going to spoil anything. They figure it out. And because they need the money and she's a podcast junkie, like she just listens to every true crime podcast. So she comes up with the not so brilliant idea that rather than turn him in, they're going to force him to do a podcast (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> about to interview him, disguise his voice, disguise their own voices so that they can make a lot of money on a live, like a true crime podcast oh with a serial killer who's still killing people. It's, oh my it's, God. And everything that ensues is like bananas. It's just, who's it's her bananas. husband in the show? His name is. He's an actor that I don't really rec. Like his face looks familiar, but I don't know what he's been in. His name's Chris Messina. 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I, I, the reason I asked. He's he was in the Mindy Project, and I loved him. Oh, okay. In the Mindy Project, he was so fantastic. He was one. Of, he was one of her her main, actually, her main love interest. He's um, super cute, and he's yeah. really good in in the role. Um, the guy who's the serial killer. I mean, whoa! Wait till you see him. Really, he is hot. Who is super hot? Now? He's a British guy who is like, I don't think he's ever done anything in America until this. Hmm. He's tall and like super hot playing an American. But hmm. um, yeah, I looked him up because I was like, you know, I'm like, we're watching like, it I'm, like, on my phone. Like, okay, who is this <laughs> guy? serial like, killer? Come on. Seriously. <laughs> yeah. He's like, a, like the, and I think part of, I'm sure part of the casting is the conflict, like how all the stupid women who love Ted Bundy. Right. You know, because Ted Bundy. I mean, I guess as far as serial killers go, he wasn't unattractive. Ugh. I mean, I wouldn't call him attractive, but I guess he wasn't like, you know, he didn't look like Jeffrey Dahmer. Right. So not gross, I think gross. part of, yeah. So part of the appeal, I think, of casting this guy is not only is he fantastic in the role and you really ne- like it's it's so well done that like you kind of wonder, like, is he really a killer or does he just want attention? <laughs> like it's it's <laughs> it's really interesting. Yeah, it's, it's so well done. Um, and it is just Every episode, it goes in a direction that we, I'm usually fairly good with like kind of seeing where stuff's going to go. So and it's twisty and turny. Is it very twisty? Very is it turny. like an action mystery or is it a comedy? All of the above. Both. Okay. It's, I mean, it is, it, yeah, it's like hilariously bizarre and also like you're in a horror movie. It's right. like, oh my, I mean, it's, it's got everything, but yeah, it's called based on a true story. And it's on that. Peacock. I had I actually signed up for Peacock again because, you know, Just I'm like the it. queen of like the seven day trial and then I canceled. And the whole <laughs> so now I'm back. I have Peacock again. Are you again. paying I'm back. or are you on your seven day trial? Oh, I'm paying for it. Yeah, because I've run out of trials. <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> so I'm paying for it. But I think I think you would really like that a lot. Um, and jury duty is just, yeah, that's just I think such that, a fun social experiment. I think I'm going to start with jury duty and then on to, yeah, that sounds good. So based on a true story, I'll have to make, yeah. uh, make a note. Yeah. Um, Cause also, we, I we really ran out of stuff Rabbit to Hole watch. Too. I know. I know. That's the thing. And with the writer's strike and summer, there's just not a lot of new stuff that's yeah. coming out. And so. well, sex, I know you're not a sex in the city fan. Um, oh, that's no, coming I like out. it. I just need to revisit. I need to regroup on that. I never got I feel into like it. If you, yeah. If you watched the first season of, and just like that. Yeah. That's all you need to know. You, just you already up. have a basic knowledge of who the characters are. Totally. So that would be fine. Uh, that starts June 22nd. And Kim Cattrall's season, back, right? Here's the As tea. a cameo. That's what I hear. She's it's, by herself. I don't even know. Yeah, I've read what it is. It's the final episode of season mm-hmm. two. And Kim filmed by herself, was not with any of the other cast. And apparently she's on either a FaceTime call or like a Zoom call with Carrie. Got it. But Carrie didn't shoot with her. So there's you know, there's still some major beef there that's just bizarre. But I think, that, you know, I think that Kim knows that her fans are really upset that she's not there. The show mm-hmm. is certainly not the same without her. Yeah, she so, was such a huge part. Yeah. Um, I was actually just reading, um, there's a new interview that Cynthia Nixon just did in Vanity Fair, and I wanted to see the the interviewer asked her about Kim Cattrall, mm-hmm. and none, you know, none of them have said anything. Kristen Davis, Sarah Jessica, and Cynthia, no one has said a word about Kim either way. Right. right. And so she, so Cynthia basically throws a little bit of shade and she's like, everyone who's on the show wants to be there. And she said, that's the most important thing. And she said, it's, it would be too difficult to walk on eggshells around a person who doesn't want to be there. And then she said, and the reasons why they're so unhappy are not even easy to understand. So I was like, okay, so Cynthia doesn't really get what the whole beef is. And maybe the rest of the cast and crew kind of don't get it either. Yeah. So maybe you she's know? just unhappy for whatever reason nobody understands. Yeah. I Weird. mean, she just, yeah, either she's really just over. Well, see, that's the thing. We can't even, it's, she should have stuck to her guns. If the issue really is 
I'm overplaying Samantha Jones, which she has said numerous right. times. And that's I fair. interviewed her once and she said that to me. Yeah. And so, and that was after the second Sex in the City movie, and she just didn't want to do it anymore. I'm like, fair enough. You've played this mm-hmm. character for how many years now? You're done. But now she's back. So it's really not an issue with Samantha Jones. It's, it's definitely an issue with the rest of the people. And right. so and Samantha doesn't or um Kim Cattrall hasn't addressed it. Mm-hmm. You know, she hasn't really said anything. She's gone on and has done a million other shows and projects. So I don't know. We'll see. But it's unfortunate. Unfortunately, it's not the cameo and the appearance that the fans really. Yeah. They want to see the girls back together again. Yeah. Of course. And all friends have issues and bumps in the road and friendships, you know, kind of change. Mm -hmm. But it was the dumbest reason ever that they're no longer friends. It's like Samantha and Carrie. Samantha was was her publicist. And. Carrie couldn't, didn't want to spend, it was like, I don't know, twelve or $15,000 a month to have mm-hmm. a publicist because her book wasn't selling that well. Mm-hmm. That's like the most reasonable thing to say. And as a publicist, Samantha you Jones would understand, would understand that. that. Yeah. So it it's the dumbest premise. I, I don't know. I just, I, I was really disappointed when I'm like, wait, that's it? That's that the seems reason? Odd. Yeah. That they're no longer talking? Like, it's yeah, it's lame. Weird. But hmm. oh, and then one final thing coming back, uh, which actually is back right now, the final season of Never Have I Ever. I know, I can't wait. I'm excited. I'm That'll gonna I'm cute. probably gonna start the first episode. It's it's I have such a, a hard time like breaking up with shows. Me too. I get too sad and then I don't watch I, them because I don't want it to end. I have not seen the end of Grace and Frankie. It's been off the air now for like two years. And Isn't I that haven't funny? seen the end. I know because I do I'm that with both so invested. Too. Yep. Yeah. I, I get so invested. I get so attached to things. I don't want to like. I'm like, I don't want this to end. Though. I just can't. Yeah. But I, I have to find out if she ends up with Paxton or Ben. I know. I or know. maybe neither. Maybe or neither. Maybe by herself. Maybe she'll go off and buy her, buy her own self. It's yep. such a cute show, though. It's a great show. Yeah. It's adorable. Um, all right. Cool. Well, thank you so much for listening, guys. And uh, we'll be back next week with, we'll get back to our beauty routines. We'll have That's some right. more products and stuff to review and uh in the meantime give us a follow on instagram at beauty pop pod you can follow jen at jennifer horn radio you can follow me at on air victoria and we've got uh, a youtube page that you can subscribe to and we've got lots of fun videos up there and little bonus content from the podcast so you can just search beauty pop podcast on youtube and that pops right up so thanks so much and we'll talk to you next week